I'm so fortunate to be in a room full of youth and people like you. You are the movers and shakers of the world. TED Talks are meant to be inspirational. And here I am inspired by you and my topic that I'm really passionate about, which is reaching new heights in global education. My name is Sheena Chauhan, and I'm an award-winning actress who has spread awareness and education in basic rights and equality to over 160 million people, for which I was awarded the Hero Award at the United Nations in New York. I want to talk to you about why, if we want to reach new heights in global education, we must make human rights education mandatory to all Indian schools to achieve decency, unity, and peace in society and create a nation where we've ended discrimination and achieved true equality for all. We must spread awareness of and education in basic rights and equality. I come from a very traditional Punjabi family. I'm a Sardarni who grew up in Kolkata, where I saw my mother not allowed to pursue her passion for acting or even get any form of jobs as due to customs. Women are not usually allowed to work, which in a way is gender discrimination. In school, as I moved into theater, acting, and then soon into films, I experienced similar form of discrimination and unfair treatment that I really had no answers for. It was at this point that I was introduced to humanrights.com an organization that I am now South Asia ambassador for, where I learned about the Indian Constitution and the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights, including the right to do not discriminate. Knowing my basic rights under the Indian and international law about how we expect to be treated gave me the knowledge and power to demand that I was treated equally and not accept discrimination. What greater heights could we possibly hope to reach individually or as a nation than those where people are all treated with equal respect? And the place where we are taught that is, is in a way, of course, that is a part of our responsibility and our rights, which is where we have how to treat others and respecting ourselves are in our constitution and the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights. I realized that only by knowing our rights can we stop them from being violated. Knowledge which comes from education equals power. Okay, imagine this. Imagine when children and the youth who are the actual wealth of a country bloom to its fullest potential being educated for the future. And through my human rights campaign, that's the dream I had. Where it spreads then after that like wildfire through the communities and the children take responsibility for what their responsibilities really are. Because they are the future leaders of the world. After I was voted by an audience for best audience connectivity, after I was voted to the audience for millions for the title, I am voice in Miss Universe India, I was launched in the south in the female lead role opposite the megastar Mamuti. And then I went on to act in seven films, three of which were with national award winning directors. These opportunities gave me a platform and my social media audience jumped to over half a million and I was being talked about in the papers. So guess what? I had a voice. So when humanrights.com asked me to tell others what I learned about human rights, I jumped at the chance because, because I realized that I wanted to use my power and my platforms for a purpose greater than myself. Humanrights.com saw that the global literacy rates had fallen for decades and on top of that even people who can read are reading less and less but they do watch videos. They love films. So I use my platform to spread humanrights.com's 30 films that communicate the message of our 30 basic rights. I visited schools, 
I went on TV shows and I got human rights education kits entered into the curriculum of over 150 schools and universities in South Asia. One of the lectures I gave, which is a story that stands out to me the most, was of a girl called Asha. She was at the school and it's a school called Pardada Pardadi in Uttar Pradesh. Asha had been born to a woman who was a prostitute and who was shunned in a community. But Sam Singh, the founder of Pardada Pardadi, took her under his wings when she was just 11 years old and ignored all of the social discrimination, taught her that she had every right to education and equal treatment and that she ended up getting a full scholarship to Delhi University. And then what? When she came back to her village on the break, the men who had protested the building of this school for girls could not believe that while still at university, she had been hired by a research company and she was making 2 lakhs a month, 20 times what than the average man in the village made. And she was doing it part time. Pardada Pardadi is just one school which teaches their young women human rights on a weekly basis. And these are the kind of results it gets. Humanrights.com gives free human rights education kits to any school in the world giving in-depth education over 15 weekly lessons that cover subjects like don't discriminate, the right to education, social security, no slavery, no torture, freedom of expression, etc. I have given human rights seminars and lectures in every kind of schools, slum, government, private, and we have collaborations now with the two top film schools in India, Whistling Woods and the Film Institute of India. Another story that struck me was of a girl called Tara. After we delivered a lecture showing the rights to their kids, she came up to me and she asked that, you know, if these rights really applied to her, she had been so mistreated by her father and she was told that she was going to get married after the fifth grade. She couldn't believe that this was not acceptable because that was ingrained in her and that she really had the right to education and no torture. But once she learned that she had these rights, I saw a sparkle in her eyes and she was empowered and she told me that she would never accept that again. At least that was her promise and her decision to herself. You know, it is making differences like this in the lives of children and the youth that brings me the greatest joy and that inspires me to believe that human rights education and awareness is the most powerful way to change the world. We have to, we have to teach these rights because our constitution is one of the finest in the world. But how do we bring it to life? You know, it's what our laws are based on. How can we expect children or anyone to live in a world and not know the base, this basic information? The Indian Constitution and the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights are the documents that tell us the way we should act, live, the way we should treat others, so they must be taught this in great depth and in a way that ensures people understand the information. Reaching great heights isn't only about our economy or intellectual honors. It's about who we are as people, how we treat our elders, others, and how we are treated ourselves. It's about building a truly decent society where we all know and enjoy our rights. But the first step is knowing them, right? So we have to educate. We have to educate people fully in their rights. In 2019, I was awarded the Hero Award at the United Nations, where I used my speech to ask the ambassadors of the world to work towards mandatory human rights education in schools across South Asia. So when the Indian government wisely released its new education policy to move the country away from learning by repetition and memorization and instead promote critical thinking, creativity and problem solving skills, I was really pleased. Education is about learning knowledge that you can use to improve life. It's not about memorizing information to look clever. It's, it's about understanding life 
so that we can make our lives and the lives of everyone in society better. After I had been nominated as Best Actress in Dubai and Shanghai Film Festivals for the film and story which was also on Netflix, I decided to keep my acting skills at the top of my game by going back to my roots in theatre. And I was preparing for a lead role in this legendary Prithvi theatre when the pandemic struck. As well as rehearsing for the play, I was in the middle of a major educational tour for India for human rights. But the pandemic stopped this entire program and like the rest of us, I was stuck at home. So, what I did to make sure that my human rights work didn't stop was I set up a podcast called Born Free and Equal where I invited stars like Sonakshi Sinha, Ravina Tandon, Sonu Sood and others. Our Balki launched it to talk about a different human right. And then once the pandemic lessened a little, I also did events with Preeti Zinta, Oscar winner Guneet Manga and Imta Zali to focus on rights having to do with women's security and freedom of thought. It was by this podcast and these events that I spread the awareness of basic rights and equality to a hundred million people in a year. What I did on this podcast and at these events was make also sure that no word went by that people didn't understand and that we talked about the human rights in a way through basic information and how it can be applied to day-to-day -day life. What the major issues are affecting the country regarding these rights. And we got these artists and these stars to tell motivating stories of how they would use these rights and how they would really bring it to life, addressing the current issues at that time. It starts with dialogue. That is the kind of education we need. Education in alignment with the government's new program. Information that you can really use and that, that helps you understand the world and solve problems. And these are the most important problems we face inequality, poor education, bullying, domestic violence, child labor, all of these problems are directly addressed by the Indian Constitution and the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. One fine day after having spread awareness of and education in basic rights and equality to over a hundred million people in one year, I got a message from the Human Rights Office of the United Nations. I was really honored that I was the first person they picked me this year especially to help them to promote the 75th anniversary of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And immediately after that, the Times of India did an article quickly followed by another with a headline about my long history calling for mandatory human rights education in all schools in India. All this because the United Nations saw that I was fully making sure that the information about human rights was being taught so that people really understood it. Now if you google Indian actor humanrights.com, I come up 1, 2 and 3 out of the 274 million searches because I'm creating awareness of the most important information that has practical use in everyone's life in a way that includes visual and audio demonstrations so that concepts can be grasped and we make absolutely sure that no one goes past any words they don't truly understand. And what are the results of that human rights education, you may ask? If we can do this across all India, spread awareness of basic rights and equality, educate everyone, especially every child in schools, about their rights and responsibilities. That is how we will achieve decency, unity and peace in society with a nation where we have ended discrimination, have achieved true equality for all. I can't think of any greater heights than that. Jai Hind.